everyone, I'm Jess for Meyer Hatchery and welcome to our webinar, Things You Wish You Knew Before Raising Chickens. I've been raising chickens for quite some time now. You can say I have a bit of a poultry passion. I have a flock of mostly bantam chickens, ducks and quail. I've been a member of the Meyer Hatchery family for over four years and I absolutely love sharing the passion and adventure of raising your own poultry. Today, hopefully, I'll give you some tips and suggestions for starting your own poultry journey. Let's get started. Before you can get started in your poultry adventure, you wanna first check your local laws. Some cities and homeowners associations have different laws regarding raising poultry and keeping them in your backyard. You wanna take a look at how many chickens you can have in your yard. Some places you can have chickens, but maybe you can't have roosters, or in some places you can have chickens, but you have to have a certain size yard. You also wanna take a look at the laws regarding what type of poultry you have. Again, some places you can raise chickens, but maybe you can't raise turkeys. So it's important to take a look at all those laws before you get started. After you've gotten the okay to raise chickens in your backyard, now it's time to decide what types of chickens you'd like to raise. There's a couple different purposes when it comes to chickens. You can look at a breed that's dual purpose, such as the barred rocks, meaning they're great for eggs, but they're also good for meat production as well. There's many breeds out there that make excellent pets and are really kid friendly, like Buff Orpingtons and Easter Eggers. Maybe you'd like a breed that is an excellent egg layer. Then you're gonna wanna look at a breed like a golden buff or a white leghorn. Another thing that you wanna take a look at is your climate. If you live somewhere, like I do, where the winters are really cold and a bit long, you wanna look at breeds that have smaller combs and lots of fluffy feathers. If you wanna raise a breed like frizzles or silkies and you live in a really cold area, just keep in mind they may need an additional heat source during the winter time. Another point to keep in mind is do you want to raise standard chickens, which is your traditional sized chicken, or do you want to raise a bantam chicken, which is about a third to a half the size of a standard chicken? I like to suggest if you're a little unsure with standard sized chickens and you're just beginning, grab yourself a few bantam chickens. They are the perfect intro to the poultry world. Many bantams lay lots of eggs, make great mothers, and are really friendly, especially if you have little ones around. After you've done all your research and gone through all the different types of breeds, be sure to place your order for your chicks from a reputable hatchery like Meyer Hatchery. We have lots of great breeds available and a ton of educational resources to help you with your poultry adventure. Now that your chicks have been ordered, it's time to set up the brooder. Now that your chicks have been ordered, you need to get your brooder together before your chicks arrive. A brooder is going to be your chicks home for about six to eight weeks before they go in the coop outside. Inside the brooder is going to be all the necessities that your chicks need to get them off to a great start. When choosing a brooder box, you have a few options. First, you can build your own brooder box out of wood. You can purchase a stock tank to use as a brooder box. A lot of people like to use plastic storage containers for their brooder boxes because they're super easy to clean. Once you've chosen your brooder box, it's time to add everything inside to the box. First, you're going to need to add some bedding. A bedding that's commonly used is pine shavings. It's absorbent and it's going to be easy for your chicks to walk on. You don't want to use anything with a strong odor such as cedar chips as that can be harmful to chicks' very sensitive respiratory systems. A tip for the first two days of your chicks arrival in the brooder box, you can put some paper towels down to help your chicks 
really strengthen up their legs. And after those first two days, you can go ahead and take those paper towels out and allow the chicks to walk right on the pine shavings. You're also going to need to add a waterer into your brooder. And there's a couple different type of waterers out there. There's a traditional water like this one here, or some like to use a cup or nipple waterer system in their brooder. You're also going to need a feeder for your chicks. And this feeder here is a gravity fed feeder where I fill up the container here and the feed falls out the bottom. There's also feeders available that will prevent your chicks from standing or perching on the feeders. You can use those as well. You're going to need to choose a heat source for your brooder. And with that, you have two options. First, you can use a heat lamp, which is typically mounted outside of the brooder and pointed down into the brooder. You can also use a heat plate like this here, which mimics the mama hen in the brooder. When choosing a location for your brooder, you want to make sure that your brooder is inside, out of the elements, and in a room that is room temperature. So you don't want to put the brooder somewhere where it's very cold or somewhere where it's very hot. It's important to keep your brooder draft free. As the young chicks, they can be sensitive to drafts and getting chilled easily. After you put your chicks in your brooder, you've got about six to eight weeks before it's time for them to go in their coop. So you need to choose what type of coop you would like for your flock. There's kind of two different worlds to go with the coops. You can go with a static coop, which is a coop that's in place, you know, built in place, could be a coop, a prefab that coop that you've bought and built, or maybe a shed that you've turned into a coop. Or you can go with a tractor type system, which our omelet igloo cube is. I prefer the tractor system because I can move my chickens all around the yard and they love the fresh grass every couple of days. Every backyard and every farm is a little bit different, so you have to choose what's going to work best for you. When choosing your coop, make sure that you keep in mind how many chickens you have and you want to have at least three square feet per chicken. So when you're coop shopping or deciding what type of tractor system you would like, make sure that you keep that in mind. So as I said, I have a tractor system and my farm. I actually started with a static coop and throughout the years I discovered omelet and I absolutely love the ability to be able to move my coops from one place to the other. I have my movement of my tractors on a bit of a schedule. So about every three to four days, I'll move my coop to a fresh patch of grass. And with the omelet, all I have to do is raise my wheels and move my tractor into place. And we're good to go. Some other points to keep in mind when choosing your coop setup are first, egg accessibility. How do you want to gather those eggs? Do you want to have to go into your coop to get the eggs? Or would you like to access the eggs from the outside? With my omelet here, I can access my eggs just by simply opening the store right here. You also want to think about your feeders and your waterers and the type of systems you're going to be using for your feeder and your waterer. So with my omelet here, I have a feeder and water that actually attaches right to our fencing here and they're really easy to access for me and easy to clean. Something else to remember is when you're choosing your coop setup, is it going to be easy for you to clean? When I first started and I had the static coop, it was great, but after a while it got a little more tricky to clean. So when I decided I was gonna change my whole setup and go with my omelet here, I found really quickly that the omelet was so much easier to clean. Not only do I get to move my omelet from one place to the other, so I don't have to worry about cleaning my run, but the unit itself here is really easy to clean with just some soap and water. There's also a place at the bottom here to collect all your bird's droppings, which is right inside here, which I'll tell you is one of my favorite parts of this omelet. I take this tray out, I dump it out, hose it off and put it back in again and we're good to go for another couple weeks. You also wanna be sure that whatever coop setup you have, it has proper ventilation. 
So it's going to keep your flock warm in the winter and cool in the summer, but allow adequate airflow through the coop. The omelet here has a double wall insulation, which keeps your chickens cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Built within your coop setup, you want to make sure that you have proper predator protection. So you want to make sure that depending on your coop setup, that you have the right amount of fencing around your coop. You want to make sure that you're using hardware cloth versus chicken wire for your fencing. Hardware cloth has those smaller openings and it's very hard for predators to get through there versus chicken wire, which is a little bit more flimsy and predators can actually pull the chicken wire down. And I'll tell you, this omelet has saved my flock from a fox and a mink. So I'm pretty impressed with this omelet here. You also wanna be sure that your coop has anti-digging all around the coop. So my omelet already has an anti-dig skirt here, which as I said, has already helped save my flock from predators. If you have a coop that maybe you've built, you can bury some hardware cloth about 12 inches out all around your coop, and that's gonna prevent digging from around your coop. Another really important thing is to make sure that your coop has no holes in it. So really do a good inspection. Make sure that there is no place that a predator can get inside your coop. Some predators can get in a really, really small hole. So it's important to take that extra step and add that extra predator protection to your coop. Health and nutrition is very important with your flock. You wanna make sure that you're feeding your flock the correct feed for their age and that you don't skimp on the feed, meaning you offer your flock good, high quality feed. From hatch till about seven weeks, you wanna offer your flock chick starter that is 18 to 20% protein. From seven weeks till about week 16, you wanna offer your flock chick starter or grower that is 16 to 18% protein. And around week 16, 17, when your flock's laying or just about starting to lay, you want to offer them layer feed that's 16% protein. You can also offer your flock grit, and there's two types of grit. There's small grit that's for chicks, and there's traditional grit that would be for your older chickens. When your chickens start laying after that 16 week mark, you can start to offer them additional calcium, free choice. So I like to have a little container full of the calcium and allow them to eat from that as they need. Most layer feed does have calcium already in the feed, but adding that additional calcium is going to help your birds, especially if they're just starting to lay. There's also many supplements that you can offer your flock, such as brewer's yeast, which is going to help with their immune system. You can also offer your flock vitamins and electrolytes, such as a vital pack, which is going to give them a boost from hatch all the way up through adulthood. When raising poultry, it's important to have a chicken first aid kit on hand. Some items that you would want to add in your first aid kit include some antibiotic ointment for your flock, some petroleum jelly or coconut oil for frostbite prevention, some vet wrap for maybe if you have to hold a bandage into place. You can also add medications such as VetRx into your first aid kit. And I highly suggest having a copy of the Chicken Health Handbook on hand just for reference when treating your flock. There are so many benefits to raising chickens. Chickens are an excellent food source. You're gonna get eggs from your chickens and you can also raise them for meat as well. Chickens are an excellent source of education. It's great to work with your family raising your flock. Chickens teach you a lot about self-sufficiency. Nothing is more exciting than going outside and getting the first egg that your flock has laid. Lastly, May is Mental Health Month. And did you know that chickens are good for your mental health? Seriously, raising a flock is so rewarding. And I highly suggest it to anybody that has the chance to take this opportunity.
The last point to remember with your poultry adventure is that research and education is everything. It's also important to remember you're not alone in this poultry adventure. Meyer Hatchery is here to help. We have an amazing customer service team that's available by phone, email, and chat to help you with your questions. And we also have a great amount of resources, including blogs, our help desk, YouTube videos, podcasts, and more. Omelette also has tons of resources to help you, including their blog, their customer service team, and their chick selection guide, just to name a few. Hopefully today, I've helped you learn some things you wish you knew before getting started with chickens. Special thanks to Omelette for having me to present this webinar to all of you. Thank you so much for watching and happy chickening!